everybody it's pam with silver and sparkles <clears throat> and um as you can probably tell we're going to be talking about little golden book journals today so first thanks for joining me i appreciate your support and you watching my videos so i have some tutorials that were posted i believe like maybe last december December 2023, I think. Um, I'm gonna link those for you in the description because it shows you how to construct a journal like this out of a little golden book. And these are all put together, but I haven't gone through and added pockets and tags and um, tuck spots and all the fun things that I usually add to my junk journals, but um, they've been constructed. So basically what I mean by that is I took you know, I took the little journal book that started off like this, taken it apart. I've made the signatures. I added a two inch spine. There's five signatures and then put the papers in, okay? And I'm not gonna redo that tutorial today because it's there and um, you guys can go watch that. It's in a two part series um, and I hope you'll go watch. But I got a question from um, someone and I'm um, her username on YouTube is Judy Evans Parker 5989. So, hi, Judy. Um, and she was asking me if there's a way to keep the pages of the original book um, in order. And I'm going to grab another little golden book just sitting here. Here's the one. Um, and so what she wants is the story to be easier to read. And I thought, well, you know, that makes sense because this is how I've traditionally done them and how I taught you how to do them in those other videos. And, you know, when you get to the first page, that's fine. And when you get to the second, you know, so that's the second page and the third and fourth page, you're doing fine. But then once you get further into the journal because of the way the pages are they're um these double pages so suddenly this is not the last page of the book um this is like the the, the page that's in the middle of the book because you have there's two little signatures in each little golden book and so by the time you start getting further along in your journal, the pages are out of order. And um, because I have always traditionally taken the, the little book apart and left the pages whole like this and put them in. And so these might be, these two might be, end up in that first signature. So you've got you know, page one, two, three, four, and then you've got whatever number these are. They don't number the little journal books, the little golden books don't have page numbers. But anyway, I think you're following me what happens. So you get later on and it's out of order. So I gave that some thought and we actually messaged, you know, in the comments a couple of times and I had a few ideas. So one was, and I've already taken Alice in Wonderland apart. Um, and I've got an idea of some things we're going to do to show you to fix Alice in Wonderland. But I've taken Alice in Wonderland apart, and these are how the pages come out. So one idea was, you know, this has five signatures. You could just pick one of the signatures to and, and keep all of the pages together. Um, or you could spread them out, um, like one, one signature and are one group of these in signature one and one in signature five. I don't know. You, you could decide. You know, I, I like I like having the variety of papers. So you see one from the original book, and that's a coffee dyed paper and a book page. And, you know, I, I like this variety, and you flip through. But I, I would like, I, I like the idea of let's be able to read the story um, without having to jump around, even though... It's not every every page is the story. So, but the, but that's one idea. You so you could, you know, when you open the journal, you could get to this part and oh, there's you know you can read the story and then maybe go to the next signature that has pages and oh, you can read the rest of the story. So that's one idea. Um, just thought I'd throw that out there. 
But what we both discussed was what probably made the most sense is to cut the pages apart and add a hinge. And then um, the story will be in order. So that is what I did with Donald Duck. And guys, Donald Duck is loved. Um, it, it, this one was very well loved and you see even the page, the original pages all have, I don't know if that was not on yeah, by a critter before it came to my home because I, I, it came to my possession in this, um, condition, but it is a beautiful, um, little golden book. And this one is from 1990. The, the illustrations are the 1954 version. So, um, some child named Dale was given this in 1994, and Dale must have loved his little golden books. I have a, a lot that belonged to Dale. So what I did was, you'll see there's a little hinge, but it's not covering up um, any of the illustration. We didn't lose any of the um, book. Here it comes close to the illustration, but it's okay. Um, it's just very, very close. And you can be careful with when you put the hinges on. Um, but we didn't lose any of the words. And the best part is they're in order. So I went through on this one and I can erase it later if I want to. I just used a pencil and I numbered all the pages so I wouldn't accidentally get them out of order and I wouldn't have to stop and read to pay attention of where I was um, at in the story. So that's page 11 and of course 12. And then the next time one pops up, you've got page 13, 14, and it goes through. So for this one, I did the hinges with some book pages from a, a Old West book. I love the texture of the pages. Um, they were almost exactly the right size and height, the way I turned the paper. And I, I love how it turned out. Um, and I'm gonna finish this one at some point soon. So th that is what I'm gonna show you how I did that today, okay? So really all we're going over is how to make the pages from the original book work so that you can read the story in order, all right? So I'm gonna set that aside and again, how how I took the book apart and um, how you end up sewing it or constructing it and sewing the signatures in. Watch the other videos for that. This is just to fix those pages. All right, so I've taken it apart and um, this will be my cover. I love this one. Um, and it's a newer one, but what's so interesting, when I looked at the copyright on it, um, the original was 1951. Oh, there it is. I just missed it, 2016. So this one is um, only about eight years old. So it came in some that my, my husband bought a big lot of little golden books for me last year for Christmas. He knows what I love. So now I have a very large collection and this was in there and there's a mixture of ones from the 50s, 60s, 70s. I think I even have some from the 40s and then some of the newer ones. So that's great. So they could, the, the pages come out like this, as I have said. So we're gonna set the cover aside. I am, and I probably could have done this off camera, but I didn't, I don't wanna, again, accidentally mix mine up. So I am gonna go through really quick and number the pages. And I'm using pencil again. I can erase this. Um, and you don't have to do this step if you think you can keep everything in order. That's fine. I never noticed that Little Golden Books did not have um, page numbers. It's interesting. All right. So we got up to 12. So this is 13. Um, so I'll take a, a, an opportunity now to say, if you haven't um, subscribed to my channel, please do so. Um, if you like my content, please give me a thumbs up. Um, leave me a comment. I really appreciate it. And um, I even had a couple of people here in recent weeks, it was so sweet, um, said, I'm going back and watching your older videos and getting all kinds of ideas. And I was like, that is just the best. So thank you guys. Um, I'm really having fun with my YouTube channel these days. So I appreciate all of you. Okay, so again, I can easily erase, erase that off if I want to later.
Now, what I did um, with the Donald Duck book is I just took the whole stack over to my guillotine cutter or trimmer, right? And I just cut very carefully right down the middle on both of these. Um, and I'm gonna run over there and do that. I'm not gonna be gone, but for just a second um, and cut these pages in half. They also almost appear to be, um, have like some perforation. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this or not. See how they look perforated? And this might just be the new one. They may have done that to make them fold nicely. Let's see, I'm gonna be brave. I'm gonna take just one, because it definitely looks like it is perforated. Let's see what happens if I just do a ruler tear. Yep, look at that. Interesting, isn't it? This is where I'm gonna be glad that I um, put the numbers. There's only two. I'm gonna be brave and tear these together. So then all my pages will be apart. So however you choose to tear your pages apart, um, 13, 15, there we go. However you choose to tear yours apart, get them all where they're um, individual sheets now. And I tend to leave mine in order. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is I've already prepared some pages and I will give you the measurements of what I'm using. This is just from a scrapbook pad that I have and I cut the 12 by 12 piece um, so that it was, um, I, I took four inches off, a little more than four inches. I made it seven and seven eighths, which is just a little bit less than the little golden book journal pages um, to make it easy to line up. And then I just cut them in half so they're each six inches wide. Now, you can have it be wider if you want and closer to the exact size of um, the little golden book page, up to you. All right, each of these, I am going to, um, score approximately a quarter of an inch. And um, I, I say approximately, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with this. You can lay this in your scoreboard if you want to, um, but I'm just gonna do it a quick and easy way and just use my bone folder and my ruler. And I'm just making, it's approximately, I bet this is more like a half an inch, hold on guys. Yeah, it's right at a half an inch, okay? And this is what we're gonna attach to the page. And we're just gonna do a few. I mean, you're gonna be able to figure this out pretty quick in what I'm doing. Um, so again, about a half an inch. We'll do three. And I thought this paper was fun. Look, this one has the spoons and um, this is Let's see, little chairs. I just thought it was kind of whimsical for Alice in Wonderland. Let me grab the paper pack and show you guys really quick. I didn't think about that. It is one that I got um, by the Paper Studio at Hobby Lobby, and it's Kirby Teasdale. And I don't know if they still have it. I've had this one for a few years, and I still have some sheets, um, obviously. But I like it. It's not... Um, cardstock weight, but it's not super, super thin either. So anyway, there you go. That's what I'm using. Again, you can use book page as long as it's sturdy enough. You could use copy paper. I mean, you could use other scrap of paper, whatever. Lots of choices. All right, let's do one of the spoons. But I know someone would ask me, oh, where, what paper is that? And I would be like, oh my gosh, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I put that, that away and it is now somewhere um, that I'm not aware of. Okay. Things sometimes go missing in my craft room. All right, so we'll do maybe three. So the first thing you wanna do is um, get the page out you're gonna work with and 
this is the way I find it is the easiest. I just line it up like this, hold it nice and steady, sturdy, because you've got a big layer under here. Get out, I'm using um, wet white glue. This is the Line Co brand PVA glue that I use almost exclusively now. I also use my art glitter glue, love it. Um, but this one is a little more economical and is good for book baking, so it's perfect. And then I put it in these little bottles. So if you are interested in any of the supplies I use, go check out my Amazon storefront that's linked in the description. Um, and I do earn small commissions if you guys do purchase after using my, my link. But I do it more so you can see, um, see what I use and in case you want to buy similar products. Okay, so that really is the extent of it. So now, when I get ready to decide all the pages in the signature, I can keep the story in order, layer this in just like you would any other page that's gonna be in the signature. So again, I scored a half an inch, folded it over, take the page, and this is exactly how I did the Donald Duck one. And I think it looks great. And I'm really happy with it. I am really glad that Judy asked me this question because honestly, I hadn't really thought about it because I really think about these, you know, as being journals. And I actually journal in my journals and um, collage and do all sorts of things in mine. And so I hadn't really thought about that um, preserving the story would, would be of interest, right? I don't know why I didn't think about it because I also love to read and I love little golden books. Uh, maybe it's because I don't have any young children in my life. Maybe that's it. Um, I have a lot of young adults. Um, you guys know uh, my husband and I together, we have five kids. Um, I gave birth to two of them, but the other three are definitely mine. Um, and I love them, but none of them you know, or married or in that, that stage yet. So there, there are no little ones. So maybe that's why I didn't think about it. I don't know. But now I'm excited to make some using this strategy. So it takes a little bit longer because you are working on the pages, but I think the impact is definitely worth it. Now, if you don't want to have plain white paper and with this one, I was totally, you know, the, the paper already is pretty bright white, right? But, um, you know, you could use two-sided paper, you could use digitals and print on both sides or just use digitals instead of scrapbook paper. So you've got lots of options. But I think, again, it looks really good. And again, I used book page. And this, um, let's see, was the very first page. So it'll be the last page in the same. So there's the other side. And I didn't even make it, you know, full over there. These are a little bit shorter, so. Anyway, I love it. I love how it turned out. I'm really excited to finish this Alice in Wonderland one. Um, so fun. And um, that's pretty much it. So it was a pretty quick and easy, but go back if you want to make one. If you like this type of um, spine and binding. Um, I don't have any of the ones that are all finished because they've all sold. But um, if you're interested in one of my little golden books, I don't really put them on Etsy anymore. Um, and that, that's a whole story why, but um, I do sell them privately and I sometimes have them in my storefront, um, my brick and mortar store. So um, if you're interested, you can always um, send me a direct message. Okay. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. I hope you will. Um, I have a lot of people tell me they're, they're afraid they're going to mess them up. And so they haven't really ventured into, even though that's why they purchased the old little golden book. Um, so maybe watch the video and, um, I don't, I, I think everything's always fixable. You know, I, I don't tend to make the little golden book journals with the rings, but you know, if you are struggling, that's always an option to you, you know, take it apart and use a ring style binding because, um, they're just, I think they're so fun to use, um, in this medium. So, all right. Have a great day, everybody. Until next time, I'll see ya.